Hello, welcome to today's vlog. Today's a little bit different. It just so happens that on this particular day, there's sort of like a, I don't know how they're, how they're advertising it, but basically Didcot are doing a particular day where you can walk around Didcot, but there's no trains running. So it means that you can go into the sheds and see what's available. Now I have a spare hour to go and have a look around. So I've come down here and we're gonna have a look around and see what's available. Uh, I've never been to Didcot before, so this is all brand new to me. So I'm now gonna try and find my way around. To access the Didcot Railway Centre, you have to go through the main station, through the barriers, and then there's a little underpass that you can go to. Up the steps, and there you are. Now apologies if the wind is going to <laughs> throw this off a little bit, but just to explain what this is, so it's basically, it's like an open day where there's no trains running. Uh, the idea is that you, you pay a small fee uh, and you get to have a look around the site. Uh, the only difference is no trains to go. Now I have been told that there is a train actually running, however it is booked out for school parties at the moment, so not for me. However. I've not seen anyone else on site so far, so it might just be me. Uh, I'm going to follow the uh, advice of John, the person who was on the reception, who's given me some advice on where to go next. So he said to head down towards the signalling section and the museum, uh, and then I can also go and have a look in the logo sheds. So, let's have a look. After entering the site, I was able to start walking towards the locomotive shed, the cafe, and the museum areas. There were some fantastic views of a breakdown crane and the exceedingly loud building work that was happening towards the coaling tower. It was really, really nice to see and the views were fantastic. And being one of the few people there, I was able to get some fantastic shots with the camera on both my phone and my vlogging camera. The past of the Didcot uh, railway area is known for mostly the coal shoot or the coal loading uh, area. Uh, it's currently under refurbishment, but in the area around we've got a, got a nice little diesel, we've got some uh, Freightliner wagons and a Dutch livery wagon which I'm exceedingly excited about and I'm just going to turn around and show you this beauty. Now those who have followed the channel for any period of time will know that I am a big fan of a Class 8. And this is a 604 Phantom. come up on the back bit over here because over in the distance over there there's a class 66 uh, starting up and it sounds quite beasty but there's a sign saying that there's uh, railway antiquities and stuff in this carriage here unfortunately uh, although it says it's open I can't seem to get in so I'm gonna see if there's another way in so I went and had a look in the museum it's very nice it's quite quite small um, not that that's a problem, it was just smaller than I was expecting. So I've just come up to uh, the top part of the area. As I said, apart from the schools being here, there's a couple of um, couple of people, but otherwise it's pretty much just me. Um, but I'm on the broad gauge platform at the moment, so I'm going to have a stroll down. I'm near the turntable, I'm up the far end of the Didcot area, so just have a look, see what's around. Just in the carriage area, and uh, beautiful Great Western auto coach here. Looks like it's being refurbished, but a lot of chocolate and cream here, and I'm, I'm all for it. This lovely Mark 1 that also looks like it's being done up as well. It's just lovely seeing them all up so close and in peace and quiet as well. Just 
some pictures from all the volunteer stuff. In the other room they've got a lot of the old Victorian four-wheel coaches as well that look absolutely stunning. But when you're up on the same level as them almost like on a platform, you don't necessarily get to see them as well. Whilst having a look around in the carriage sheds, there are a lot of other things that I've not seen before, including some of these old four-wheel coaches, as well as a beautiful Royal Mail carriage. Having a look at some of the under construction work that was roped off from the normal passerby, it was great to see what the skeleton of a coach looked like. Possibly my favourite photo from the whole day was this one with lots of rusty bits sitting around in the yard as well as that poor Great Western brake van just sat there. It was a sad sight to see. Whilst having a look around outside, I managed to stumble across this Great Western Railway rail bus. Next up I got to have a look at the turntable area. I've always had a fascination with turntables, I can't tell you why, but it's something that I've always wanted to model on a layout. I couldn't justify putting one on my current layout, and for some reason I didn't feel right putting it in a diesel layout either. Gawking at the piles of scrap at the back of the loco sheds was quite interesting, trying to work out what parts had come from what engine. Leave a comment down below and tell me if you've seen some parts that you think are familiar. So the weather's playing out here today. It is a mix of rain, sunshine, windy, so apologies if you can't hear me. I'm just around the back of the engine shed now. Uh, I'm just coming across the nice, beautiful red on that wagon. Breakdown crane over here as well. Um, and there's some carriages and what looks like an old, that's a great western tender if I've ever seen one. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have a quick look around here and then we're going into the engine shed, which is where you will see the excitement. So I um, literally finished filming that clip and just started walking around and then absolutely poured it down. So I, lit I didn't get a chance to have a look around all the carriages and stuff. But I've, um, I've come inside the engine shed here and uh, I get to see this beauty. Walking around the engine shed was extremely fun. I wouldn't be able to sit here and tell you every single class or breed of loco that was in there, but it was fantastic to see them all in such a small confined space. This was probably the only part of my little trip where there was a massive build-up of people that wasn't part of a school. Having a look round was really fun as there were engines of different shapes and sizes all in there. With the loco shed done, this was the last part of my little tour around Didcot. I had a look in the gift shop and sadly the antiquities section wasn't open on this day. The staff on site were extremely helpful and I cannot thank enough the gentleman on the front desk. He made me feel welcome and provided me with lots of things to do on my visit. As I was heading out, there was a nice little treat waiting for me on the main line.
So there we have it. We had a little trip down to Didcot. It was really nice to go around whilst there was nothing on and have a look around, see all the engines in the shed and stuff like that. That was a really cool experience. Uh, I'd highly recommend coming down here. Uh, Didcot are doing a special thing on Wednesdays during April and May. Uh, let me double check that. Uh, where you can come down on a Wednesday uh, and you can have a look around whilst they're not running any trains. Um, I was extremely lucky as a big diesel fan just as I was coming down from, uh, as I was queuing up to leave, just onto the main line, there was a class 56. Gave a little toot and uh, went away and that was really nice. But yeah, thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you guys again soon.